In this video, we're going to talk about three stocks with high insider buying right now, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. I'm Richard Allen. I appreciate each and every single one of you. In this video today, we're going to talk about three stocks that have high insider buying right now. So what's so important about insider buying? Now, as the old adage goes, there are many reasons to sell stock in a company. Maybe a, a, a director or a CEO or someone in the company, uh, there's a lockup period and they're done and they want to get some of their, there's, get some of the sell some of their shares for cash or maybe there's tax reasons to sell there's there's a whole slew of reasons to shell, sell shares of a company but the old adage goes there's only one reason to buy and it's that if you are buying and you're a director of the company most people that work for the company and are directors or executives or something like that they know far more about the company than the normal average everyday investor so that's a that's a big thing note so if they're buying a company they're confident in that company going forward. Maybe it's for the short term, maybe it's for the long term. But I want to cover three companies that we found based on the Insider's Hot Stocks tool here on tipranks.com. All right, first one is Nicolette Bank Shares, ticker symbol NCBS. This is a small cap regional bank holding company based in Wisconsin. The subsidiary company, Nicollet National Bank, operates 30 branches in Wisconsin and Upper Michigan, offering a full range of personal and business banking solutions, ranging from checking accounts and savings deposits to mortgages, wealth management, and retirement services. The company has been sound revenue and earnings through the last five quarters, which continued in its latest quarterly statement. Nicolette reported EPS of $1.77 per share in the second quarter of 2021 based on $18.2 million in net earnings. The net was up 34% year over year with the EPS gaining 38% and beating consensus by over 8%. Revenue also came in ahead of the street's forecast increasing by 13.8% from the same period a year ago to reach $55.75 million and $19.62 million dollar beat the company finished the first half of the year with 4.6 billion in total assets of which 792 million was cash or cash equivalents management boasts that nicolet has the most active acquisition record among wisconsin banks and that the first half of 2021 the company made two relevant announcements first in April, Nicollet reached a firm agreement to acquire Mackinac Financial, a regional bank with $1.5 billion in assets. The deal will close in the third quarter of 2021, pending shareholder approval. Regulatory approval has already been obtained. The second, Nicollet entered an agreement to acquire County Bank Corps, a major agriculture lender in Wisconsin. County will also bring $1.5 billion in assets to the company, and the merger is expected to close in the fourth quarter of 2021. Both companies now seeking shareholder and regulatory approval. Now, here's where it gets good. Turning to the insiders, we find that the company's CFO, Hubert Moore, and a board member, Robert Wires, have both made informative buys in recent days. Moore spent over $510,000 buying up 7,000 shares, while Wires' buy was smaller, but still a quarter of a million dollars for 3,500 shares. Now, NCBS comes with a strong buy based on three analyst ratings with an average upside of 22.37%. All right, second stock on our list is another bank holding company, this time the parent corporation of Montana-based Glacier Bank or Glacier Bank Corps, ticker symbol GBCI. The company has banking locations across eight states, including Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona, Washington, and Nevada. Glacier Bank Corps is another of the many regional mid-cap banking companies, and its subsidiary offers the usual range of banking services to individual and commercial clients in both brick-and-mortar locations and online. Glacier boasts over 190 locations, total assets of $20.5 billion, deposits of $16.8 billion, and loans of $11.2 billion. 
The company's year-to-date net income is given as $158.4 million. Second quarter income was $76.2 million, up $14.2 million year-over-year, or 22%. EPS came in at $0.81 cents per share, gaining 21% year-over-year and beating the forecast of $0.73 cents by over 10%. Excluding the payroll protection program activity from the government during the corona crisis, the company reported a 10% annualized increase in loan activity, mainly in commercial lending, a gain of $249 million in the quarter. Like Nicollet above, Glacier is active in acquisition activity and announced a merger with Alta Bank Corp. during the quarter. The Utah-based company will bring assets worth $3.52 billion to the table, once the merger receives shareholder and regulatory approval. All right, let's move on to the insiders. On the insider front, the informative buy here was made by Craig Langle, director and chairman of the board at Glacier Bank Corps. Langle spent $773,250 on 15,000 shares of GBCI. GBCI comes with a moderate buy based on three analyst ratings with an average upside of 11%. All right, last but not least is Imara, a clinical stage biopharmaceutical firm engaged in research on hemoglobinopathies. I'm sure I said that right. Ticker symbol there is IMRA. Specifically, the company has a drug candidate in the pipeline as a treatment for sickle cell disease and beta thasomia. These are two blood disorders, both sets of related disease that cause anemic symptoms. Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that causes misshapen red blood cells and can lead to serious quality of life issues in shortened lifespan. While beta thasomia is a hemoglobin disorder also inherited that reduces the blood ability to carry oxygen. Neither set of diseases currently has a fully effective treatment. So this is a big, big deal for people that struggle with these diseases. The insider trades, the key transaction from an investor perspective was made at the end of July by board member Mark Chin. Chin bought 1.333 million shares for nearly $8 million. Huge. Now we have one analyst here from Lee Rink. Joseph Schwartz is very bullish on IMRA. In fact, he has a uh, price target of $42 per share. That's true confidence in this stock. This is an impressive 661% upside potential from the current share price. So maybe Mr. Mark Chin knows something that we don't about this company. Guys, let me know if you enjoyed that. I think insider buying of a company is a very good indicator on short-term and long-term confidence in a stock. I think it's a great way to look at companies and find out which of their executives or board members are excited about these companies going forward. And this is something that if for public companies, this is public information. So it's something that you can peek at right here on tipranks.com. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow.